Okay, uh, let's uh, continue. The next talk is Optimal Randomized Document Exchange uh, by Bernard Hoppler. And awesome, uh, thanks for coming here. I'm super excited to present this work. Um, this is, uh, so the document exchange problem um, is a very simple, cute problem. Um, two parties have two strings that are somewhat similar. Okay, so I have a string, you have a string. Uh, they're different, but they're not, they differ only in a very small amount. Maybe I edited it a little bit, maybe you edited it a little bit, maybe somewhere else something got corrupted, who knows. We don't know what the difference are, but we know that we have two strings that are similar, and we know roughly how similar they are, right? So there's some kind of distance from these strings, and they're K close, okay? So now I would like to send you my version of this string. I could just send it to you, but that's a huge string, huge amount of data. So the strings are similar, that seems a big waste. So what we would like to do is um, sketch our string. So I'm gonna take my string, and I'm gonna sketch it down to something very small, and I'm just gonna send you the sketch. But I have no idea about what the changes are, but I know roughly uh, how many changes there are. I'm gonna send you the sketch, and then what we would like to have is that you can take the sketch, um, combine it with your string, and then there's some efficient procedure which outputs my string. Sounds pretty magical and cool and useful. Um, and so, yeah, so this is what we want to do, and um, the objective is mainly to minimize the sketch size. Well, actually, maybe there's two objectives. We want these uh, procedures, both the sketching and the recovery. We want those to be efficient, polynomial time, and um, we want the sketch to be small, right? Ideally as small as the number of the description of the number of changes, so the, the changes itself, which we don't know. Um, good, so there's two flavors of this, um, randomized and deterministic. Um, if we do it randomized, then we can just, in the sketching procedure, we can use some uh, private randomness, maybe in the decoding, we can use some, uh, some randomness if it makes things faster, and we just want the recovery to um, succeed with sufficiently high probability, right, as high as possible. Good, um, the distances that we can use here is basically any distance that you can um, come up with. The most interesting uh, distances that we look in here is kind of the classical Hamming distance, right, so num number of changes of, uh, of symbols, and actually, all of the results are mostly interesting for the edit distance. So um, how many edits, in terms of like insertion, deletions, um, do I need to transform x into y, uh, the classical edit distance? And we all know it's uh, more general, um, combinatorially a good bit trickier and harder, and that makes this whole thing more interesting. Good. Um, a very related problem is error correcting codes. We all know error correcting codes, right? So we, I have a string, I want to send it over a channel, so there's gonna be some corruptions. So I encode it into a slightly larger string, send it over, you have, now we have two related strings, the code word and some corrupted version of the code word, and we want to recover the code word from the, um, from the or the original string from uh, the corrupted code word, and um, Maybe if we look at systematic error correcting codes, it's a little bit clear what really the, the, the relationship is between. So systematic error correcting codes have the nice properties that the encoding is basically the string itself plus a little bit of extra redundancy, right? So the first part is always the string itself. And for example, any linear code, we can easily make it systematic, no problem. Good, and so really, here, also what, are, what am I trying to minimize? Usually I want this computation efficient, and I want uh, to maximize the rate, which really says I want to minimize the amount of redundancy given the amount of errors that I want to tolerate. Okay. And um, so these two problems are related, and in fact there's kind of an easy um, relationship between them. A systematic error correcting code for some distance is essentially up to, up to constant factors in the amount of redundancy, uh, the same as a deterministic document exchange protocol. So we can go from one to the other and vice versa, and it's really, really simple. Um, suppose that I have a systematic error correcting code. What am I gonna do to sketch the document um, for, for this distance? I'm just gonna encode it. I'm gonna throw away the systematic part, and I'm gonna take as a sketch only the, uh, uh, the non-redundant, as a redundant part, right? The non-systematic part. Now, if, if I give this to another person where they, they have a string that differs very little from mine, they can put this string together with a, with a redundancy, run the usual error correcting code decoding algorithm, and voila. Right? Good. Um, how about the other direction? The other direction is very similar. Suppose I have a document exchange uh, protocol. How to get a systematic error correcting code? Well, the encoding is going to be, well, outputs message first. It's a systematic code. Then what we would like to add is just the document ex uh, exchange sketch. 
But if I send this over, the sketch might get corrupted and be in trouble. So what, I'm, what am I going to do? I'm just going to take the sketch part, only this very, very small part instead of the whole, uh, the whole thing. And I'm going to encode it with a simple error correcting code, which might blow things up by a constant factor. But since we're only encoding a small part, it doesn't really matter. And this works. Good. Um, applications um, are, there are many. Um, you can imagine file synchronization like the Linux tool rsync does exactly this. You have uh, some, docu uh, some documents, some large amount of files, some folder here, a uh, similar version here. You want to ex you know, update some of the over a slow line. Um, this does exactly this. If you want to maintain a database where changes are made everywhere, you want to update things. Uh, version control has some kind of things like this in it. Caching, usually, right, you, uh, you pull, pull a website, you, uh, you have a hash that tells you, if I laid a request, I just check the hash, are the two websites that I'm requesting is the same? If there is the same, I'm not gonna pull it again. Um, how about you uh, instead use a document exchange sketch? Now, if the two websites differ very little, for example, they have a timer there, a number of um, visitors there, and that's the only thing that's changed, you can re recover the orig original website instead of having to pull it. Right? So um, error correcting codes have plenty of um, applications as well, and here in particular for insertion deletions, discrete DNA uh, sequences, if you do a DNA storage, any kind of channel where you have synchronization orders is kind of where we want to use error correcting codes for insertion and deletions. And kind of one cool thing to point out is that because document exchange is really only one way, right? I prepare the sketch, I deposit it somewhere, I go away and you later pick it up, we can do document exchange with multiple people at the same time, right? So some kind of server who has the up-to-date version can create a sketch and lots of people can come who have different versions of this file, maybe the first 1% was edited here, somebody else has some different edits in a different place, whatever, they all can come, pick up the sketch and recover the up-to-date version. Um, good. Now, um, what do we know? Um, existentially, everything is pretty simple. I mean, how many bits do I need to describe k changes in a string of length n? Um, k log n, okay? So k log n is necessary, and it's also sufficient, and that's true for both Hemming and for added distance. Um, and it's also true if you ask about a deterministic document exchange protocol, and this was first kind of proven by uh, Orlitsky some 28 years ago. And then the big question was, can we have something that does this computationally efficiently? Um, for Hemming distance, um, the answer is yes, because we understand Hemming uh, error correcting codes very well. So algebraic systematic, algebraic geometry codes will exactly give you kind of this optimal trade-off up to a constant, no problem. Um, then um, error correcting codes for added distance has, of course, been studied since, you know, basically the times of Hemming, uh, Hemming and Shannon. Um, progress has been relatively slow, has picked up recently, uh, Madi and I are both writing kind of a, a survey for the transactions honoring uh, Levenstein, who recently died, so you can read up on kind of these really cool things that just happened over the last couple of years. Um, but uh, still a lot of things that we don't know, and um, for document exchange, also recently things have uh, really picked up. So there's a whole sequence of better and better protocols. Um, the best thing that we had up to, up to this point was a randomized scheme uh, which gets um, redundancy or uh, sketch size k log n plus log squared uh, as long as k is sufficiently small, some small polynomial, right? And if you look at it, um, as long as k is, you know, some small sub-polynomial sub exponential and squared log n, um, this actually gets the optimal size, but it doesn't give anything for, uh, for larger k. And generally, actually, uh, we didn't have anything that gives something for case that are uh, case that are linear. Let's say one percent of your document is being corrupted. Okay. Um, another problem with, uh, with with this solution is that it only gives like a small failure, uh, a relatively large failure probability. So in the case where it's optimal, the failure probability is still polylogarithmic. Often you need it to be polynomial. Then you need to amplify it, and again you lose log factors. Um, so um, what are the results that I want to tell you, or is it in the paper? Um, basically, we get an optimal randomized document exchange protocol with k log n, uh, k log n over k um, sketch size. Um, the success probability is always with high probability, and this holds for all values of k. Um, so this is very nice and clean. 
Um, we also get some deterministic uh, deorganization of this with a slightly uh, larger sketch size, so it's k log squared n over k, so it's, it's this log n over k factor extra. Uh, those results were also independently obtained by uh, Cheng et al. Um, and these imply better error, uh, systematic error correcting codes as well uh, for insertion and deletions. Um, so what's, you know, what, what are the interesting parts? Okay, we, we resolve the open question, at least for the randomized setting. Um, and as I said before, kind of the nice thing is that these are the first documented exchange solutions, randomized or, de or deterministic, which work for the case that a small constant fraction of your document is, is corrupted, right, or is, has, has changed. Let's say 1%, 0.1% of your document has changed. Um, all the solutions that we had before is sent the whole document. Now you send something of the order 0.1% times uh, some small constant. Okay. Um, similar for error correcting codes, even non-systematic error correcting codes, the best weight that we had was one minus square root of epsilon if a small epsilon fraction is corrupted. Um, now we are at epsilon log squared one over epsilon. We exactly kind of log one over epsilon far away from the entropy. Um, which is kind of nice. Um, good, so um, let me tell you, or try to tell you a little bit um, how, these, uh, how these results are actually obtained. And um, on a high level, and kind of the overall scheme really goes back to a, a systems paper by uh, Ermac et al. Um, it's a very, very cute idea, also maybe fairly natural if you think about it. Uh, what can you do? You can hash, you can send hashes, maybe you send hashes back and forth to figure out what parts of the file are the same. Now we're trying to do the same thing, except without going back and forth. Right? So um, how exactly does this look like? We take the string x that we want to uh, sketch down, and we cut it into uh, uh, in, in a tree-like manner. Okay? So on level one, I start with 4k blocks, all of equal size, or roughly equal size. Um, in the next level, level two, I split each of these blocks into two. And then I split them again into two, and I split it all the way down until you know, I have single, symbol, uh, single symbols at the bottom. Right? Okay, so um, what I then do, I take each of these blocks, the larger blocks and the consider, uh, you know, smaller blocks down there, and I hash each of these blocks down to um, some log n bits. Okay, random hash function, log n bits, this high probability should give us a property that each single, each single interval, each single of these blocks is gonna get a unique hash. Um, hash collisions are gonna be not occurring with other strings um, with high probability too, so that's kind of a nice thing. Um, instead of sending around these big strings, let's just send log and bit hashes, okay? So now, what do I put in my document sketch? Uh, some basic information like how long is x, um, the description of the hash functions, so the random seeds that are used. Uh, and then I include information about these hashes. Basically, level one, I just give those 4K hashes. They're small enough. Um, level two, or, or higher levels, the number of hashes, is the number of blocks are gonna get grow exponentially up to order n. We don't want to send all of those. But hopefully, we, at the time where we use them, we already know a good number of them. So what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna use the document exchange solution for the Hemming case. Um, so I take all of these order n hashes in the last uh, in the last level or in all levels in between. I think of them as a string. I do the, a document exchange solution. So I take a systematic algebraic geometry code and code them and I just take the redundancy and put those into my sketch, right? And I prepare for distance 4K, yes? And why is 4K special? Um, order K, um, I choose 4K to make things work out. Oh, okay. K is the distance, okay. Danny. Uh, k is, you know, yeah. K, k is the distance between, the added distance between the two strings. Okay, good. Um, so this is what we put in the sketch. Any questions about how the sketch looks like? I think it makes, makes pretty much sense. So now how do, how do we use this to uh, then recover the string, given a string y which is close to it? Uh, we do this inductively, level by level. Uh, let's assume that we know for level i, we already know all hashes. So for uh, in the beginning, level one, we know all the hashes because they're literally in the, in the sketch itself. Um, I'm gonna use these hashes and try to recover blocks of x um, using my string y by just finding intervals that have the same matching hash. Right? So what I have is y, 
which is somewhat similar to X. I know that X has been cut into like four equal sized parts. I know the hashes of these parts. So now I'm gonna look for some arbitrary intervals in my string Y, and if those hash to the same thing, then, well, unless something went, you know, unless we got really, really unlucky, then these should be the same strings. So I actually know the, you know, second quarter of the string by just putting my Y in there. Okay, and I keep, uh, I do this. And um, because any block that doesn't have an edit in there um, will be found somewhere in the string, we will recover all but X, uh, so all but K blocks of X in this step. Okay, each of these blocks is now gonna get cut into two and it's gonna get hashed down again. If I know what's in this block and I know the hash function, I can compute these hashes myself. So let's just compute all the level two hashes that we already know from, uh, from, from this matching. Uh, at most two K of them we don't know. And that's great because now we can take the document, the Hemming document exchange sketch for level I plus one for the next level and recover the remaining 2K that we, that we are missing. Good. Um, quick animation, this is a whole, this is uh, the exact description that I just gave you. So in the beginning, we have why we know that this has been cut, but we don't know what's in the blue stuff, right? Um, we get the hashes, level one hashes from our, uh, from our sketch. We find corresponding parts in Y, we fill in those, only K of them are remaining. We can compute the hashes for the next level, um, at least for the parts where we know, for the parts where we don't, we don't, but then we can use uh, the uh, document exchange on, in the Hemming world uh, to make this work and keep going, right? So we find again a matching to Y until we've basically recovered the whole string. Awesome. Um, good, so how, um, how large is the sketch? Well, uh, really what matters is the number of levels uh, times the, the size of the uh, hashes that we or the size of the information per level. How many levels do we have? We start with k blocks, we end up with n blocks. Uh, we double the number of blocks in each round, so there's log n over k levels. Um, and in each round we basically send, um, want to recover 4k hashes, which are right now of log n size. So 4k times log n is basically what's dominating here and also what's kind of the bottleneck for, uh, for this whole thing, right? So if this were a constant, we would be really happy, um, but right now it's a lock-in. Okay. Um, good, so um, what are kind of the problems and interesting things that come up when you try to reduce uh, uh, the hash size? Well, the, the problem is, of course, if you make the output size of the hash smaller, the failure, the coalition probability for any two strings is exponential in the output side with a random hash function. So smaller hash sizes cause a larger number of collisions, okay? Can we deal with collisions? And um, one thing, one simple observation is maybe we don't need no collisions at all. In fact, order k collisions is perfectly fine. The only thing that will happen, we will match a part of the string to something that it shouldn't be matched. We will compute two incorrect hashes but since we're using the Hemming, cache, uh, Hemming, um, Hemming document exchange anyway, this Hemming document exchange can easily correct those as well. Right? So um, some hash collisions are fine. Uh, we also don't need to match willy-nilly. I'm matching an interval here and a matching interval here. Um, doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So if you only use monotone matchings, we are optimizing over a smaller number of matchings. And in fact, um, fairly easy kind of probabilistic method proof says enumerate all the matchings, enumerate the probability for a fixed matching to, to have too many incorrect hash collisions. Uh, you'll see that if we use kind of a log n over k uh, bit hash function, then things still work out. And that's kind of what you would expect because there's order n, uh, order n things that we're matching. If uh, I have a hash function with, with of size log one over epsilon, then I should expect Absolutely many hash collisions. Um, for this, we need things to be independent. We can use almost independence um, and do some other kind of tricks coming from synchronization strings to bring this down back to log n. And um, if you look at it really, really hard, um, one can see that we can actually see whether a seed or a hash function is good without looking at y. We can only determine it by looking at x if one do it, does it the right way. And um, that, uh, that allows us to 
then de-randomize this in a brute force fashion. Right? So just go over all the different uh, seeds, check whether they work. If they work, uh, that's great. Good. Um, if you want to go below that, um, there are serious barriers that one runs into. Um, one is that the expected number of hash collisions that one has, even in a single matching, not even optimizing over exponentially many matchings, even in a single matching is going to be too large. Right? So that's a, uh, that's a problem. In fact, if you think about it, um, if I want to identify K-failed hashes in, uh, among N, each of the hashes of size S, then just information theoretically, I do need K log N over K plus K times S bits. So um, even if the hash sizes get smaller and magically we don't have enough hash collisions, to do this document exchange trick to recover the, the remaining, even just the positions, is going to take me k log n bits uh, in each of the runs. And I don't have enough time to, to tell you how to get, get around these, but I'm happy to talk you, to you about it, um, or you can read it in this paper. Um, and um, so I'm basically done. So what I showed you is an optimal doc uh, randomized document exchange protocol uh, with optimal sketch size k log n over k. Um, uh, De-randomization, which also gives error correcting codes, uh, which loses the log of one over k, uh, n over k factor. Obvious open problem is, uh, can we get this deterministic? Um, maybe a good first step is to drive failure probability from polynomially small to exponentially small, which is something that makes information theorists in general also happy, um, but once we, you know, there maybe we can drive it to zero, get it deterministic. Um, the algorithms are super, super elegant. They look like they're uh, for most parts, and then they have at the very end this kind of annoying brute force, uh, brute force um, uh, polynomial time brute force steps in them. It would be really nice to eliminate those, get some practical, uh, useful implementations of this. Uh, and then all of this relates to um, error correcting codes, list decoding, local decoding, streaming and sketching, uh, lots of questions to play around with in, in this space. Um, so, thanks. Are there questions? Um, the constant in the sketch size. I, I don't uh, know. I don't think it has to be huge if one, if one really tries to optimize it. But then, I mean, one thing that you have to look at is into these pseudo-random generators, right? Uh, which give you a sufficient independence. I don't know how tight the parameters are. Are they, if so, if they are order of the same magnitude? Small, large, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It kind of has to be known, uh, I mean, at least up to some, uh, up to order. Because uh, otherwise, like, if I send you too little information, you clearly cannot recover. Uh, and in fact, just kind of by, by the fact that there might be collisions otherwise, I mean, since the number of possibilities is too large, um, it, the document ex uh, exchange sketch might have to look like the distance is small even so it's not. I, at least if you're talking adversarially. If you talk randomly, then no. Then you can just add a hash in the end and see if it worked. If you want it deterministically, then for sure. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, no, no. Um, yeah, so what might happen is that you take a different, you know, you take a part of string Y uh, and match it and say it came, or it's a string, part of string X came from the string Y where it really didn't. Um, where really it came from here, but they happen to be the same string, but that's perfectly fine, right? I mean, you still recover the same information here. Uh, and since you're using hashes to check um, whether the strings are the same, or kind of you declare success if you recovered it correctly, it actually makes things easier. Okay, uh, let's thank the speaker again.